The Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky visits a hospital in Kyiv to thank medics as the Russian bombardment in the Donbass region continues. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he'll guarantee the safe passage of grain from the Black Sea ports after he met with the African Union leader. Smoke continues to billow in the Donbass region with thousands of lives lost in Ukraine during the last 100 days of fighting. And Russia continues to pound the eastern region, particularly in the town of Severodonetsk. Moscow has so far seized around a fifth of the country. The Ukrainian health system has had to make a huge coordination effort, but hospitals close to the front line are left without staff and equipment. The NGO Doctors Without Borders is trying to move patients from the area for much needed medical treatment. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited a hospital in Kyiv on Friday to thank and award medics and staff for their work. He also spoke with servicemen who were wounded in battles. The 44-year-old says his country is a very different place now. Exactly 100 days ago, we all woke up to a different reality. Exactly 100 days ago, the rest of us woke up. When Ukrainians are awakened, not by the sun's rays, but with explosions of missiles that hit our homes, then completely different Ukrainians wake up. There are three words that we've been fighting for, for 100 days after eight years. Peace, victory, Ukraine. But with continuing talk of victory, how many more people will have to queue for basic food and aid in the next 100 days of war? Three weeks of training are needed before Ukrainian troops can use the new rocket systems from the US and Britain. The Ukrainian president will be hoping it's not too late to push back advancing Russian forces. Russian President Vladimir Putin says he's ready to support a smooth export of Ukrainian grain via the Black Sea ports. It follows a global food crisis, particularly in vulnerable countries such as Africa. You're quite welcome to export wheat via seaports under Ukrainian control, first of all via the Black Sea ports, Odessa and the nearby ports. We didn't mind the Ukrainian ports, it was Ukraine. I've told our colleagues many times, let them clear the mines so the ships loaded with wheat can leave these ports. We will guarantee their safe passage with no problems. The comment came after the head of the African Union, Maki Sol, told Putin that African countries have also become victims of the war in Ukraine. The Senegalese president met with Putin in Sochi, saying that Russia should help ease their suffering. But the Russian president denies he's stopping grain from being exported. Meanwhile, the United Nations spokesman for the Secretary General says a four-way agreement between Russia, Ukraine, Turkey and the UN is a step closer. We have seen a lot of positive comments come from various capitals, which is heartening. Um, but I'm not in a position to confirm dates uh, or to provide you with a, ca with a calendar at this point. Over in Belarus, Russian ally President Alexander Lukashenko says he's open to allow Ukraine's grain to travel through his country to reach Baltic seaports, but it's on condition that Belarusian goods can be exported from these ports too. The letter Z serves as a reminder of Russia's war in Ukraine. More than 100 days have passed since the invasion. But while patriotic colours fly, there are suggestions that some Russians' attention is starting to flag. A recent poll conducted by the Levada Center, seen as a foreign agent in Russia, says 73% of respondents believe the so-called special military operation is successful. The center's founder explains. This is almost a total information blockade and censorship. A huge mass of the population receives its only news from the television. And from the TV comes such aggressive demagoguery, lies and just straight down the line propaganda, with the manipulation of pictures and a very strong suggestive script. We're not only talking about the actual sudden impact of propaganda. This matter is much more serious. This is the kind of complex propaganda that 
that was developed in the Soviet Union and became a characteristic of that time. This is the psychology of a besieged fortress. This is a struggle with the West. This is consolidation around the leadership of the country. In general, it seems that the whole context has returned to Soviet times, opposing the West, two competing powers, fighting the enemy and relying on the moral capital of victory over Nazism. The rhetoric is of the fight against Nazism, regardless of who will be declared Nazis today. There is support for the war, there's approval of Putin's actions. His rating remains at a very high level, as often happens during previous military campaigns. We saw the same during the second Chechen campaign, the war in Georgia, or the annexation of Crimea. Now the rating is approaching the maximum. Margaret Atwood's fireproof edition of The Handmaid's Tale will be auctioned off at Sotheby's in New York. The often banned novel is estimated to reach between 50 and 100,000 euros on Tuesday. Proceeds will go to PEN America for its work in support of free expression. The book's stable up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's more than 5,500 degrees Celsius. After 227 years, Portugal's crown jewels have finally gone on display inside the country's long unfinished royal palace. The Ajuda Palace overlooking the capital's Belém district was home to Portugal's last royal dynasty, the Braganzas, until 1910 when the country became a republic. The collection includes more than a thousand items dating from the 17th to the 20th century. This tiny creature is the first albino Galapagos giant tortoise ever to be observed in captivity or in the wild. The baby was born in May in a tropical zoo in western Switzerland. It has a white shell and red eyes, and it's not known yet if it's a boy or a girl. These endangered tortoises can live up to 200 years. Cave lovers can enjoy prehistoric artworks from the Cosquera Cave at a replica of the underwater cavern in Marseille. Drawings of horses, bison and penguins have all been replicated because the only way of seeing them is to dive to the bottom of the Mediterranean. The cave was discovered in 1985, 37 metres beneath the sea. I've been working since the beginning on the reconstruction, with my eyes mostly to help the painters and the plastic artists who made all the creations and everything. At the same time, it's to get as close as possible to reality. Some of the cave's treasures date back more than 30,000 years. Climate change, water and plastic pollution threaten to wash away the Stone Age drawings. We have a whole space that will provide the Paleolithic context. Why were there large penguins in the harbour of Marseille and painted in the Cosquera cave 30,000 years ago? And why has the sea level risen since the Ice Age? Three men died trying to discover the cavern, and it's among four of the largest cave art sites in the world. But what it was used for remains an enigma, according to experts, and archaeologists agree that people didn't live there. The Catalan surrealist Jean Miro has a monographic exhibition at the Chilida Licu Museum in northern Spain for the first time. The works pay tribute to the friendship between him and Eduardo Chilida. The two artists were good friends, and the exhibition includes sculptures, drawings and engravings. The display will be available to see until the 1st of November. French painter Rosa Bonheur is honoured at Bordeaux's Museum of Fine Arts on the bicentenary of her birth. The exhibition showcases her fascination for animals. Her love for drawing animals began after her mother taught her to read and write by getting her to draw a different animal for each letter of the alphabet. The realism artist was also a true icon of women's liberation and popular in the United States and in England. And the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam presents Colour as Language, exhibiting works by the artist Etel Adnan. The display is the first from a female artist at this museum. It features 72 of her works and is presented alongside 10 works by Vincent Van Gogh, as he was a significant source of inspiration for Adnan. This museum developed the exhibition in close collaboration with Adnan before her death in November 2021.